Hi, I'm Bob Trainer, representing the United States Coast Guard's Marine Transportation System Directorate, Office of Navigation Systems. This presentation was used to introduce the Coast Guard's 21st Century Waterways Future of Navigation Initiative at the various listening sessions held across the country over the past few months. The primary goal of this initiative is for the U.S. Coast Guard, in partnership with other federal agencies, to better leverage rapidly developing information technology to gather, consolidate, and more efficiently disseminate navigational safety information to mariners. The other federal agencies heading up this initiative with the Coast Guard are the other chair members of the Committee for the Marine Transportation Systems e-navigation task team, which are the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The diagram on the slide depicts in general terms the shared waterway responsibilities of these three agencies. All of them disseminate in one way or another critical navigation safety information to the mariner. The listening sessions were designed to provide a venue, apart from traditional communications, to introduce waterway stakeholders to federal initiatives currently underway to achieve the primary goal and to solicit from waterway stakeholders what types of marine information mariners currently or would like to access, how that information could best be accessed or delivered, and what types of marine information are most important to mariners for waterway navigation safety. Among the Coast Guard's responsibilities in this initiative are the United States Visual Aids to Navigation System, or USATONS, which includes buoys, beacons, sound signals, raycons, etc. The marine safety information, including broadcast notice to mariners, local notice to mariners, light lists, etc. And electronic aids to navigation, or e-navigation. All of these responsibilities disseminate marine information in one way or another. Buoys and beacons, for example, provide the mariner with information, albeit somewhat coded information. Professional mariners know that red buoys are left to starboard when entering port in the United States, or that an aid to navigation exhibiting a quick flashing light usually signifies a turn. A red beacon's red triangle dayboard marked with an even number and yellow triangle informs the mariner that the beacon is part of the U.S. Intercoastal Waterway aids to navigation system. The primary objective of the United States Visual Aids to Navigation System is to mitigate transit risks to promote the safe, economic, and efficient movement of military, commercial, and other vessels by assisting navigators with determining their position, a safe course, and warning them of dangers and obstructions. Regardless of how marine information is disseminated in the future, this objective will not be degraded. The idea is to incorporate current and emerging information technology into the U.S. Visual Aids Navigation System to augment, not replace, the current system of buoys and beacons. As stated in the Committee of the Marine Transportation System's e-navigation strategic plan, the U.S. vision for e-navigation is to establish a framework that enables the transfer of data between and among ships and shore facilities, and that integrates and transforms that data into decision and action information. The ultimate goal of e-navigation efforts in the United States is to use timely and reliable information to make the U.S. Marine Transportation System operate better. The U.S. ATONS is a key element of the waterways component of the U.S. Marine Transportation System. As you can see from this slide, the infrastructure and traffic of the MTS is quite extensive. Please note the number of people who are directly involved in one way or another with the Marine Transportation System. This slide gives you a brief overview of the economic impact of the marine transportation system. The marine transportation system is critically important to the economic and strategic well-being of the United States.
As you can see from this slide, the navigational situation in the marine transportation system has changed dramatically since the 1970s. Ships with deeper drafts, wider beams, greater lengths, and larger cargo capacities routinely transit the MTS today. For example, the beam of a typical ship transiting the MTS in the 1970s was about 108 feet. Today, the beam of a typical ship has grown to 180 feet. Ship's drafts have also increased from about 29 feet in the 70s to more than 49 feet for the largest of the ships transiting the MTS today. While there has been some channel deepening and widening projects to accommodate these larger ships, the channel dimensions of most U.S. waterways have not been able to keep pace with the larger ships transiting the MTS. The result is a much narrower margin of error for many transits leading to increased transit risks. Improving the way navigational and marine safety information is disseminated to mariners will help mitigate these transit risks. The Coast Guard has initiated a program to improve the delivery of marine safety information by leveraging the National Automatic Identification System NAIS infrastructure. NAIS was designed to provide the Coast Guard with the means to survey the marine domain, detecting vessels for response and prevention activities, assigning specific classifications such as name, home port, type of cargo, etc., and generally contributing to the safety and efficiency of the MTS. This type of information is collected via the receive mode of the NAIS. Most NAIS base stations also have a transit mode where AIS information, specifically AIS ATON or marine safety information, can be transmitted directly to mariners via application specific messaging or ASMs. These ASMs can be received and integrated on existing AIS capable electronic bridge equipment such as Electronic Charting Display and Information Systems, or ECTIS. Through this initiative, the Coast Guard plans to deliver three types of AIS ATON. In some cases, AIS ATON is already being provided by the Coast Guard in certain waterways. At the entrance to San Francisco Bay, for instance, the Coast Guard is providing virtual AIS ATON by projecting application-specific messaging from an NAIS base station to specific geographic coordinates to identify check-in points for the San Francisco Traffic Separation Scheme. These virtual AIS ATONs are displayed on AIS-capable bridge electronics, depicting the check-in points and informing mariners of them without the presence of a physical aid to navigation. A second type of AIS ATON is called synthetic AIS ATON. That is, application specific messaging projected from an NAIS base station to specific geographic coordinates shared by a physical aid to navigation, a buoy or a beacon, so that the pertinent information about that buoy or beacon is displayed on AIS bridge capable electronics proximate to the aid to navigation itself augmenting the buoy or beacon's signal. For example, the SF buoy is an actual buoy augmented by AIS ATON, which is independent of the buoy. So should this buoy suffer an elision and sink, which has occurred several times in the past, the mariner will still be able to receive pertinent marine information via the AIS ATON. Real AIS ATON is the third type of AIS ATON being considered by the Coast Guard, but it hasn't yet been deployed. Real AIS ATON is an actual device fitted to a physical aid to navigation, to a buoy or beacon. The application specific messaging is transmitted from the device instead of an NAIS base station. The advantages being that the ASM is independent of the NAIS base station and will be displayed with a physical ATON regardless of its location. For an example, if a real AIS equipped buoy is off station, the mariner will be able to readily recognize that situation. 
Another advantage of real AIS Aton is that most newer devices are self-contained. That means that the device includes a GPS chip, AIS transmitter, light signal, and power supply all in one unit. These self-contained devices will facilitate the deployment of synchronized light signals, which enhances conspicuity of the light signals. The disadvantages of real AIS Aton are that they are fairly expensive and susceptible to damage from adverse weather conditions and elisions. There is great potential for mitigating transit risks by developing application-specific messaging via AIS. For example, four lighted buoys mark the main channel beneath the Mackinac Bridge spanning the Mackinac Straits in northern Michigan. These buoys are currently maintained from late April to early December. They're removed in early December because they are susceptible to damage in being dragged off station by winter ice if left on their assigned position, which could result in misleading aton signals, hazards to navigation, and expensive buoy hull repairs. So for about five months of the year, the mariner is not provided with any signal from these locations. However, deploying synthetic AIS Aton to augment the buoys in the summer months and virtual AIS Aton in the winter months would broadcast critical marine information from these buoy positions all year round, regardless of ice or weather conditions. Another example of the potential for application-specific messaging via AIS Aton is dissemination of marine safety information. Currently, this information is either broadcast via VHF radio, known as Broadcast Notice to Mariners, or BNNs, or published weekly in local Notice to Mariner reports, known as LNMs. Pertinent information broadcast via BNNs is easily missed or misunderstood especially in a busy pilot house environment. For example, the entrance to New York Harbor has hundreds of aids to navigation in a myriad of interconnecting waterways and channels. Matching a report of a discrepant buoy with an actual buoy that's discrepant, or recording and plotting the coordinates of a temporary restricted area is time consuming and prone to errors. Weekly L&M reports are published for each of the nine Coast Guard districts and are available electronically through the Coast Guard's Navigation Center website. Given the size of most L&Ms, perusing them for pertinent marine safety information for a specific area can prove to be a laborious process. However, receiving marine safety information via ASM directly to an AIS-capable display would provide more timely information while reducing the probability for errors. Information concerning a discrepant buoy, for example, could be integrated directly on an electronic charting display proximate to the buoy's geographic position. Likewise, a safety or restricted zone's geographic coordinates could be integrated on an electronic charting display in its precise location, bypassing the need for time-consuming and error-prone manual plotting. Future AIS Aton capability could also include integration of NOAA's Physical Oceanographic Real-Time System, or PORTS. Through the NOAA PORTS website, Mariners are able to acquire a great deal of valuable navigation safety information from various reporting stations in 24 different waterways throughout the United States. A mariner transiting eastbound in New York Harbor's Kilvan Coal Waterway can ascertain real-time currents and water levels at various locations near Bergen Point, as well as the underbridge clearance or air gap at the Bayonne Bridge. Integrating this real-time information via ASM directly to an AIS-capable display would eliminate the need to manually access multiple source points of pertinent marine safety and navigation information. Larger commercial vessels are not the only platforms capable of receiving 
AIS application-specific messaging and integrating those messages into an electronic chart and information display system. Lower costs and availability of electronic navigation devices for smaller vessels have resulted in their widespread use in the recreational boating community. This 21-foot recreational boat is outfitted with the latest in electronic navigation gear. AIS-capable chart displays are now available for smartphones and tablets. Use of these devices is already widespread and expanding, as are the apps available for them. Here is an example of a real-life application of virtual AIS in San Francisco Bay. This is a bird's-eye view of the San Francisco Bay Bridge. If you look closely, you can clearly see the bridge piers, which, while critical for the bridge stability, pose a hazard to navigation for mariners. There are three radar beacons, or raycons, on the bridge, marking three navigation channels under the bridge. Now the San Francisco Bay Bridge has plenty of overhead clearance, and the waterway it spans has sufficient water depth for the shipping traffic transiting beneath. That being established, a ship will on occasion allied with one of the bridge's piers, damaging either the ship, the bridge pier fendering system, the environment, or all three. Such incidents occurred in 2007 and 2013. This is the chart view of the same bridge. As you can see, the picture is somewhat confusing at first glance. But professional mariners are able to recognize the coded information embedded in the chart. Still, there are some confusing aspects. For example, the lower third of the chart is depicted in a different scale. The bridge piers are not easily recognizable in the chart view. In fact, the chart symbology for the three Raycon signals are more prominently displayed than the bridge piers, whereas the bridge piers pose potentially the most hazardous feature of the bridge for the mariner. This is how the bridge looks on an actual radar display. As you can see, the bridge fan itself is easily recognizable as our San Francisco and Yerba Buena Island. The radar is picking up vessel traffic on the southeast side of the bridge, but the Yankee Raycon signal is the most prominent radar return from that area, which could mask other vessel traffic transiting there. The Bravo Raycon signal between bridge piers C and D barely registers on the radar display. The bridge piers blend in with the bridge span and are not readily discernible from the radar picture alone. But recent deployment of virtual AIS ATON signals superimposed on the bridge piers give a clear indication as to their location relative to the bridge span. This is just a small sampling of how marine information can be disseminated to mariners more effectively to mitigate transit risks in the future. But this is just the beginning. The Coast Guard needs to hear from you, the waterway users and stakeholders. What types of marine safety information do you require? What are the most effective delivery methods and systems? Rest assured that regardless of how aids in navigation and marine safety information is delivered in the future to meet the 21st century challenges, the primary objective will remain constant, to mitigate transit risks, to promote the safe, economic, and efficient movement of military, commercial, and other vessels by assisting navigators with determining their position, a safe course, and warning them of dangers and obstructions. Visit our website at www.surveymonkey.com slash s slash 21st Century Waterways and provide your valuable expertise and input. Help us to ensure that responsible federal agencies deliver the services necessary to keep our marine transportation system the safest and most efficient in the world.